Hey guys, today we're going to be setting up the Raspberry Pi 3. Now I haven't actually set up a Pi 3 before, so this will be my first time doing this. I've set up a Raspberry Pi 2 before. Uh, I actually got this thing a while ago, it's just been sitting on my desk. But uh, you'll notice I actually went for the kit version, which has the power supply and some heat sinks over here as well as the Pi itself. And the reason why I did that is right now this kit's around $46, I think it is. And if you, well, at least at the time that I got this, um, a Raspberry Pi was like only $2 cheaper than just buying the entire kit. So I figured might as well just get the whole kit and have everything in here. And it's basically just another power supply. I don't think this has an SD card, but uh, that's all right because I do have another one of those that I can use for this. So I'll go ahead and cut into this and see. What we have here, I'm pretty sure it's just heat sinks, a power supply, and the Raspberry Pi 3, and it looks like some instructions. So there's a couple little heat sinks. I suppose one's for the uh, processor, which I think is a quad core at 1 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. For this one, got the power supply here, I think it's 2.5 amps. Might say on here actually. Yep, two and a half amps. Just a micro USB K11 end and power adapter on the other. We have an important note. The Raspberry Pi 3 requires Pi 3 compatible software, noobs 1.8 or later, Raspberry Pi SD card slot mechanism is a friction fit slot by design, unlike the spring loaded mechanism in the older Raspberry Pi products. Okay, as you, as you can probably see, this uh, this came from a can of kit here, which is a seller on Amazon, as far as I know. There's probably an actual website there, too. But anyway, uh, this is Raspberry Pi Model 3. It's got one gig of RAM. What else does it say on here? We got 802.11 BGM wireless LAN and Bluetooth 4.1. I think this also has uh, the non-low energy Bluetooth on it too. So I think there's a couple different standards of Bluetooth that this includes. I'm not real sure about that. So we've got the Pi itself and just some instructions. Stuff like this, element 14 instructions. I'm not too worried about that. I can stay in the box. <laughs> anyway. Here's the Pi. It looks about like the Model 2, really. Except for we've got that little antenna up there for the Wi Fi and Bluetooth. And there's a look at the actual uh, processor itself. And then that's that little chip that controls the Ethernet and the USB ports and all that stuff. And then there's that one gigabyte of RAM there. I think it's DDR2 if I remember correctly. So anyhow, we'll go ahead and get the uh, or start getting the software set up for this thing. Should I should show that this little kit actually comes with like a quick start guide too. Apparently, there's warranty registration and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm going to show you everything that's on the Pi there, and looks like pretty basic stuff there, how to install noobs. So anyway, that's about it. Alright, so as for the operating system here, we're going to go to raspberrypi.org, click on this download tab, and we're going to download Raspbian. And let's see here. I'm going to use the uh, full desktop image. We'll just download the zip file. And we will wait for that to finish because that's going to take quite a while. Alright, so I've got my SD card plugged in. We're ready to go here. I'll have to uh, extract this. Alright, so with that extracted, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, Win32 Disk Imager. And we're going to go find the file here, which will be under uh, 
downloads, and then this file right here is what we want. And that's the only drive that I have here. That's the uh, SD card, so we'll go ahead and click on right. That'll be fine. Here we go. All right, so since the uh, write was successful, so we're going to go ahead and take our SD card and put it into the Raspberry Pi. All right, so back over here, it says it was a friction fit slot, so I guess we just got to push it in something like that. And I have heat sinks for this. I'm not going to put them on quite yet, <clears throat> but uh, we're going to boot this thing up and see what it does. All right, so I apologize for the crudity of this, but I don't have a... Uh, HDMI capture device. So, anyway, I've got uh, my little mini keyboard and trackpad combo thing plugged into the USB port there, and the HDMI cable's hooked up. Go ahead and get the monitor turned on here. plug in this power supply that came with it which has a reasonably long cord so plug this in and see what we get and there it is all right so I'll go ahead and go through the command line raspberry pi config menu here this keyboard's kind of a pain to type on because it's so small but uh there we go so we will have to expand the file system probably and i'll have to restart the pi password i don't think Like we can do the overclock. This pie cannot be overclocked. Nope, we can't. Okay. And I don't really think there's anything else I really need to mess with with this, so we'll go ahead and say finish and it'll probably uh, reboot. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've rebooted it. I've connected it up to Wi Fi. We'll go ahead and see. What we can get with uh, in terms of internet browsing here. So, it's reasonably quick. Let's see what this does. That's actually not bad. Um, it's pretty useful. Let's see. Uh, I kind of doubt this thing would play a YouTube video, but it might. Alright, so we'll go ahead and try to play a YouTube video and see where we get with this. It's one of my videos on uh, a 3D printed Raspberry Pi case here, we'll see. Of course, the most useful thing on YouTube has got to be the stats for nerds. And it's actually kind of trying to play it. It's not doing too bad, actually. According to this, it hasn't dropped any frames yet, anyway. Can we go full screen mode on it? Sorry, I don't have any audio here. I don't have uh, HDMI audio on anything. I'd assume it's working. But yeah, it actually is playing a YouTube video without any issues. It looks pretty smooth. That's on uh, probably 720p. Yeah, 720p, that's fine. That's all my internet connection will handle is 720p. And if it was dropping frames, it would actually show up right here, and there's just a little dash there, so that's actually working fairly nicely. I've got to figure out how to get rid of the border around this, though, because that's kind of annoying. Uh, I think there's a way to do it, but... Let's see about... Uh... Let's 
not the smoothest thing in the world, but it is. It's trying. Maybe. Yeah, it's actually not too bad at all. It's, like I said, it's not dropping any frames. It's, uh... And this should tell us, well, at least it used to tell us if it had, if it was using hardware deceleration or, or acceleration, not deceleration. Uh, I don't think that does say on there anymore. It used to, YouTube used to tell you if it was using hardware acceleration, which I'm going to say it probably is here. We're using about 20% of the CPU to do this, which isn't bad. So yeah, it's actually had enough power in it to play uh, a YouTube video, and I couldn't get my Pi 2 to do that, so that's not bad. And of course, this is just a YouTube video within a normal browser, so that's all right. I'll go ahead and see if I can get rid of the border around this, because I think there's a configuration file I can mess with in there. All right, so I think I know how to fix this uh, black bar problem here. If we open up a terminal, we'll type in sudo nano slash boot slash config txt and we'll hit enter it should open this up and it says right in here on comment this view display has a black border of unused pixels visible and your display can output without overscan so we're going to delete that disable overscan equals one hit control x say yes or hit the y button then hit enter and then we will restart this thing and that should fix this there we go that's better that it fills up the whole screen anyhow now with that sorted out I should go and get uh, some speakers here and see if we can't output something to them here since this monitor doesn't have speakers on it all right so I've managed to get a couple of little speakers here they don't they're really cheap speakers that don't sound very good but uh, good enough for a little test, and I forced the uh, audio to come out of that little three and a half millimeter jack. So we'll see what this does. We're just in the middle of the same video here. Not quite enough to play that in full screen at uh, 720p, apparently. Funny thing is, that's about what it looks like when I'm trying to edit that time lapse stuff. Alright, so it actually plays alright here. What is this? 360p. Not exactly HD. And this is just uh, some random copyright free music, I'm pretty sure. I do wonder why I'm missing options here. I may have to uh, go and download and install Chromium on this thing, maybe that's why. Look at that, we have a Chromium web browser now opened up on here, so that actually seems to work fairly well. Let's see about uh, YouTube. This is supposed to have an extension on it, but I don't see like the thing over here for an extension, but uh, anyway. Like I said, these speakers are pretty terrible, so wouldn't judge the sound quality off of this, but let's see what happens with uh, not exactly smooth, is it? Except 480p. Of course, all my videos are up in uh, 60 frames per second, so that'll make it even harder to play. Give it a shot. I don't think it's gonna do too well. <laughs> no, it's not. And as you can see, it's dropping a lot of frames now with this. 
All right, so it is powerful enough to play a 480p YouTube video at least. Uh, I couldn't get it to play a 720p video, whether it was 720p 60 or 720p 30. So I'll we'll take our little heat sinks here. And these look like they're just supposed to stick on to the pie, so... Like adhesive pad type things. Presumably thermally conductive adhesive pads. something like that and then I'm not sure you put them this way kind of looks better this way I think and these are such low powered computers you don't really need the heat sinks I don't think like I said, it was getting pretty hot during those little tests, though, so we're not going to hurt anything to have these. Alright. That ought to be good enough, at least. Looks alright. So, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed my little vlog sort of video on this first time setup of my Raspberry Pi 3. So uh, anyway, see you next time guys. Bye.